So the million light bulbs puzzles puzzle goes as follows. Suppose you have this very long hunger with million light bulbs and a switch underneath each lamp. And at the beginning there is darkness, all the light bulbs are turned off. And then enters the first per person into the hunger and turns all of the lamps on. And then enters the second one and actually he changes the state of every second lamp. So in this case he turns them off the, 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 every, uh, you know, every second lamp. And then enters the ice person and changes the state of every ice light bulb. And eventually the millions person enters the hunger and changes the state of only the millions uh, uh, light bulb. Millions, yeah. And so the question is, can you characterize all the numbers that will of the lamps that will be turned on once this process has terminated, once the millions person has uh, completed his task? Uh, and so um, a million is just an arbitrary number to uh, make this problem look big and complicated. But you know, thousand would be just as complicated. But you know, million is more impressive. So anyway, uh, when you figure out the the rule here, uh, then or the characteristic of the numbers, it's just the same. Works for every number. So if you want to, to give this problem a try, pause the video now, uh, and because the solution is coming in three, two, one. Okay. So here we go. So first, let us analyze the problem uh, for a small case. It's in general. Suppose that we have only five lamps. And when I draw an X over a lamp, uh, we assume that it is turned off, right? So we have five lamps that turned off. And in general, it's it's a good idea to, when you uh, try to solve a complicated problem, if you can solve a simpler version of it, then of course it is a good, a very good strategy in trying to, to solve the problem is to analyze a special case, which is simpler. So suppose that those are the numbers, one, two, three, for five and now enters the first person and he turns all the light bulbs on, right? And then enters the second person and he changes the state of every second lamp. So then he turns this one off and three is not touching and he turns this one off and this is not touching. And then the third person uh, uh, enters the room and then uh, this one was off so he's not touching it. And then he turns off the third lamp and the fourth uh, was turned off, so it's turned off, and he doesn't get to touch the fifth. And then the fourth person, so you get the idea, he's uh, coming in, this is off, this is off, and then he changes the state of the fourth lamp, and then the fifth is uh, still on, and then eventually the fifth person enters, and so this is, uh, uh, this is off, this is off, uh, this is on, and he turns this off, okay? So uh, what are the insights here? So we actually see that what is important is to count the number of times that uh, that the state of a lamp is being changed. And so uh, what we see from here is then uh, that when the ice person is entering the room, he is changing the state of a lamp number k if and only if i is a divisor of k, right? And that's that's seen over here. So you know two is. Uh, 2 is a divisor of 4, therefore the state of the fourth lamp is being changed by person number 2. And since uh, initially all the lamps will, were turned off, and we want uh, the only the lamps that were turned on, then we need this lamp to be changing states odd number of times. Odd number uh, of state changing means you know, including one from here. So, because we start with this position and then uh, person number one, two, etc. enter. So we need odd number of changing states to happen. This means that lamp K will uh, be turned on, will be, let me write it here, on, if and only if only if k has an odd number of divisors. Now this characterization seems okay, so I don't know, it seems right that maybe it's like kind of 50-50, how do I characterize the numbers that have odd number of divisors? Right, because maybe they're just the same, like half half with odd divisors and half with even number of divisors. And for that, you know, to characterize it more concretely, we'll use the fundamental theorem of arith arithmetic. So, as it turns out, every number n can be decomposed uniquely to product of primes. 
So P1 up to Pk, where K is the maximal prime. So I number all the primes in a sequence. Uh, there are infinitely many of them, but so let K, K be the number of the maximal prime that is a factor of n. So it can be written in the following way. So every number can be written immediately up to the order of the factors uh, in the following way. P1 to the power of alpha 1, those are integers, up to Pk to the power of alpha k. And of course, some alphas, uh, the alphas are greater or equal to 0. And they could be 0 if they, for example, al alpha i is 0. This means that the i's prime does not appear in the factorization of n. And in fact, this is unique up to the order of the factors. But if we even choose to order them from smaller to bigger one, then this factorization is indeed unique. And so what we see uh, here from here is that a number is a factor of n if and only if it is all of the form p to the power of beta i. Uh, so let's write it this way. p1 to the power of beta 1 times uh, pk to the power of beta k. Basically, each such number would be a, a, a divisor of n as long as beta i is smaller or equal to this alpha i and greater or equal than, than 0. So every such number is a factor, is a divisor of n. So let's count how many uh, are there. Maybe we can figure out if it's even an odd or odd. So each beta i can be either 0 or alpha i, right? So counting from 0 up to alpha i, beta i has alpha i plus 1 options, right? And this holds for every beta. So the number of divisors, num of divisors of n, is actually, if n is of this form, it is actually the product of alpha 1 plus 1 times alpha k plus 1, right? So this is the number of divisors. And we want this to be an odd number. And let's see what does this mean. So we have this plus 1 here. And actually, if whenever we take a product of an even number with any number, it's even. So in order for a number to be odd, it has to be product of odd numbers, which means that every factor here must be odd, because one even factor here would suffice to make this number even, and therefore even number of divisors, right? This means that each of those, if this is odd and this, we have this plus 1, so each uh, alpha, alpha i, can be written as to say gamma i right let's call it this way so each alpha is essentially even right this means that this n can be factorized in a unique way as p1 to the power of 2 gamma 1 where gamma gamma 1 is just half alpha 1 and because alpha has to be even if n has an odd number of uh, divisors and then pk to the power of 2 gamma k which can be written as p 1 to the power of gamma 1 up to p k to the power of gamma k and all of this squared so look what we see we see that n has to be a square number in order to be turned on so therefore the the case light bulb will be turned on at the end of this process if and only if this k is a square so uh, between uh, one and a million, then actually there will be a thousand lamps that will be turned on. This is one squared, two squared, three squared, etc., up to thousand squared, which is a million, right? The million lamp will also be turned uh, turned on because it's it's a square. So uh, yeah, this is it. So uh, the Again, the case number, the case lamp will be turned on, so only the whole squares will be turned on. And this this is interesting because from this analysis we see that uh, it is uh, for uh, most numbers have even number of divisors, and it's only the the integer squares are those that have actually uh, an odd number of divisors. So I really hope you like the solution, and thank you for watching. Please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and sharing it with others if you like the video. Thank you.